Hey guys, uh, here you'll find a lot of content surrounding anime and manga discussion, and today's topic is uh, starting my Black Clover blind review series. Uh, I also just want to let you guys know that I'll be basing my criticisms off of the manga, since I prefer its more consistent level of quality, and let's be honest, the line art is like, it's really good. So, without further ado, let's get into the very first ever Black Clover blind review on this channel. So Black Clover starts us off with introducing the world for which the story takes place in. This is a world where everyone can use magic. Whilst not everyone has powerful magic, everyone at least has a drop of mana. Of course, the exception is being our protagonist, Asta, who is born without any magic ability whatsoever. You see, Asta's character, at least thus far, is pushing the idea that hard work is more important than just raw talent. Personally, I think it's a really strong message to tell people. Also, we see Asta constantly training, doing setups pushed to the like in order to make up for not having magic. He doesn't really let the system of the world hold him back. Also, if you're familiar with the shonen anime formula, you'd expect there to be a rival character to our protagonist. Black Clover's rival character is Yuno. Yuno is probably one of the most naturally talented magic users to exist within this world. However, being talented isn't anything new. I mean, in other shonen shows, we have Sasuke and Bakugo who already fulfill that archetype. So what makes Yuno different? Well, the main difference is that Yuno actually respects Asta, and the two characters' rivalry feels a lot more sportsmanlike. Personally, I find Yuno and Asta's dynamic a really unique aspect to Black Clover. The only issue I really have with Yuno is that at this time, he's only really capable of showing how stoic he is without really much else. So after we get introduced to Asta and Yuno, we go to the Grimoire Acceptance Ceremony. Essentially, whenever someone turns 15 in the Clover Kingdom, they are bestowed with a magical book, which is also known as a Grimoire. This Grimoire increases their magical power and holds their spells. Grimoires come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. Of course, to be expected, Yuno ends up getting the Four Leaf Clover, which some could argue to be the best Grimoire available, while Asta received nothing. Afterwards, Asta and Yuno leave, and then Yuno gets jumped by evil, nameless, chained user guy. He reveals that he's an ex-magic knight, and he easily restrains Yuno. Asta then comes in to save the day, however, with no magic ability, he gets taken down fairly quickly. Although, regardless of Asta's position, he doesn't back down, and Asta acquires the Five Leaf Clover Grimoire, which contains a demon and a magical sword. Asta uses the sword to cut through the enemy's magic and take down the chain wielder. Personally, I think this conflict was done rather poorly, since it was pretty obvious the chain wielder was not formidable or noteworthy in the slightest. In fact, I think it was pretty bogus that he even restrained Yuno at all, considering how powerful Yuno is. Past this, the two of them head to the Magic Knight's entrance exam. Now, if you know me, you'll know that I love exam arcs, or tournament arcs, or really anything of the like, and I'm really glad they decided to use this early. However, predictably, Yuno succeeds in every area, whilst Asta fails miserably in every area, except for the combat portion, where we see Asta's anti-magic cut through an opponent's defensive magic, which was super satisfying. <laughs> then, once all is said and done, Yuno joins the most powerful Magic Knight squad, known as the Golden Dawn, whilst Asta joins the worst squad in the Black Bulls. Now, this part was kind of interesting. I feel like this could have been a better opportunity for them to show off more of the Knight squads instead of just the two. But now, after Asta joins the Black Bulls, he heads off with Yami to go to their headquarters. There, we meet a bunch of Black Bull members. I'll just really quickly say what I thought about each of them. First off, we have Yami, who I think is really great. He's super attention-grabbing, funny, and just generally badass. I like how lackadaisical he is about everything. After that, we have Charmy, who just seems like a cheap gag character surrounding food. I don't really have too much to say here. Uh, after that, we have Gosh. I mean, I'm pretty sure this guy is like an ancestral pedophile, so I don't have too many good things to say about him at this point in time. Um... Next, we have Finroll, who I don't know too much about currently, besides the fact that he is easily distracted by pretty women. Relatable. Honestly, I could see myself liking this guy eventually, because his portal magic seems like it could be used creatively. Next, we have Gordon. I don't really have anything to say about him, because, you know. Then, we have the fan service character Vanessa, and man, I really hope she has any form of substance whatsoever. Afterwards is Magna. Honestly, I don't really feel any positive or negative way towards him. He just seems like an older, shoutier version of Asta with a weird hairstyle. Then, finally, we have Luck. Luck seems like he could be either really interesting or really obnoxious, depending on how he's utilized in the story. So let's let's hope for the best. Finally, we get introduced to Noelle. Noelle is a powerful noble who has issues controlling her very powerful water magic abilities. I actually find this dynamic of a powerful mage who has issues controlling their power really interesting. However, sadly, Noelle is a tsundere. I'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag here and say that tsundere's are my least favorite character trope. I really hope she evolves away from being as stuck up as she currently is. After dealing with Noelle's crazy water magic, we come to the climax of this arc, which is Asta's first mission as a magic knight. Which sadly was actually my least favorite part of this arc, since the villain was so bland he basically was not even a character. He had a pretty boring design and had very little in terms of an emotional core or interesting power usage. However, surprisingly, Noelle actually made this conflict for me. 
She finally learns that commoners are valuable and she uses her water magic to create a protective dome. And after the fight, Asta gets a rock <laughs> and a bird. The rock is probably going to become important later on, but let's just be honest, the bird is my favorite character this far. I just really like the bird's, like, expression. It's great. Oh, and also Asta takes a trip to the Noble Realm and meets the Wizard King. I believe that's all a manga-only thing. I don't think it's in the anime. And honestly, I'm gonna need to spend a little bit more time with the Wizard King before I can really get a solid impression of his character. So, so far, Black Clover is pretty decent. It has some strong points, it has some weak points. However, with a lot of shonen, it usually takes two to three, or, you know, in One Piece's case, ten volumes to get good. So, I'm sure Black Clover will improve very soon. Anyways, guys, that's all for today's review. If you like seeing my blind reviews, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe down below. However, please be careful with spoilers. <laughs> Anyways, as this video is going up, I'm currently working on the dungeon exploration arc, so look out for that. Alright guys, later!